Big night last night for Governor Bill Lee. And without a doubt, education has the power to change the trajectory of a child's life forever. I mean, he is certainly right. And a big focus of his state of the state last night was on education and his priority. And we all knew this going in. His big priority is uh, really he's setting his uh, legacy on getting every kid in Tennessee the opportunity, the best chance to go to the school of their choice. It's effectively school choice, right? We have done a lot of work in Tennessee, but we still have a ways to go in providing the best possible education for every student in the state. So 2024 is the year to make school choice a reality for every Tennessee family, every family. So you can hear in the background, and and I'm going to play that for you again, because when he's talking about, you know, vouchers for everybody, school choice for everybody, regardless of, you know, their income level and so forth. And, you know, you've got some of these folks up in the balcony and they spent the entire speech screaming at the governor. And and I got to tell you, it was uh, frustrating to say the least. So 2024 is the year to make school choice a reality for every Tennessee family, every family. And so, you know, I guess the question I would have for the super textures, and I'm going to go on a little bit more about this, but, you know, the governor's trying to give his speech and his legislative priority, and it is pretty clear that it is the priority of the state legislature, is to bring school choice to every family in the state of Tennessee. And so the the state lawmakers, they are voted in by the people of Tennessee. The governor was uh, voted in by the people of Tennessee as well. School choice is something that I believe a lot of people want. Now, is this the best plan for school choice? Remains to be seen. But you can hear the detractors in, in the background. And their main issue, of course, as you probably know, their main issue is, oh, they're going to defund the public schools. Well, no, because they have also given up uh, in the last uh, legislative session $262 million, actually, for public schools. And if I recall, the teachers got a raise as well. So I'm not exactly certain what their beef is. You had uh, Senator, State Senator Heidi Campbell in here the other day, and she was talking about how the whole thing is a scam. Don't you know it's a scam? Well, how is it a scam? That's what I would actually like to know. I mean, there are some legit concerns about what the governor wants to do, right? There is this accusation that the this is a defunding of public schools. I don't believe so. The evidence is there that it's not. They don't like the fact that families who have no real need for state funds will get those funds when that money could be going to the public schools. So it doesn't matter what your in- income level is, at least it would appear that that's what the governor says is that every child in Tennessee should be able to go to the school of their choice. And so you have some of these folks who send their kids to uh, private schools, by the way, uh, don't want parents to have that choice. They also worry that Lee's program will be just like Arizona's voucher for all program where it has gone over budget. And Arizona does have some legit problems where they have gone woefully over budget in their plan and also they've seen some abuse of the system as well because people get this, you know, seven, eight thousand dollars, whatever it is in Arizona. And they've seen that people are buying like jet skis and, and grand pianos and stuff. So there is some some fraud and some corruption that is going on in Arizona. But see, those are, again, legit questions. Here's the thing in Tennessee. We have a really smart governor, I believe. And we have a really good conservative state legislature. And so I believe that they will look at what they're doing in some of these other states and figure out the the right things to pull from those other programs and, and the wrong things to be aware of. You know, the issues and they just, you know, that you take the good and the bad and, you know, you figure out the right way to do it. And it's worth noting, by the way, that right now we don't know what's in the final draft of Governor Lee's legislation. But there are questions here. One of the biggest, will it actually improve test scores? But but simply put, that we don't know what we don't know about this thing because they're still they're still creating it. 
Now, there was one little piece of it that was accidentally posted uh, last, I think it was last week or the week before. And we'll have to wait and see if that is what is in the final version of the bill. Uh, One of the things that Lee talked about, of course, is that we have some incredible challenges uh, going on in the state of Tennessee right now. And that there are many parents in our state that do need help. The premise, the premise behind education freedom and the one thing that most of us all do agree on is that parents know what's best for their child's education. There are thousands of parents in this state who know that their student would thrive in a different setting. But the financial barrier is simply too high. It's time that we change that. We time, it's time that we let parents decide, and not the government, where their child goes to school and what they learn. You know, some people are, are actually booing the concept that parents should have a say in their child's education. What is wrong with those people? You know, I think there's a, a mix of anything conservative they're not going to like, anything that takes power away from the public schools and the indoctrination of the public schools is uh, also something that uh, folks don't like in this state, you know, that are on the left. And also they don't like anything that takes power away from the teachers unions, even though, again, Bill Lee and the state lawmakers gave uh, teachers a raise. And by the way, some parents who have not received vouchers in like Davidson and Shelby counties, you know, their kids are trapped in those schools where you've got low test scores and crime and pregnancy and bullying and all of those things that are going on in those schools. And these kids and these families are trapped. Now, I do understand, you know, that there's going to be some people out there that that are going to say, well, you have these families with the means to send their kids to private school. Why should we be paying for uh, their schooling? I guess that's up for debate. But if we're going to be fair, everybody should have access to the ability to go to the school that um, they want their kids to go to. And school choice is something that is a, a clearly a conservative conservative tenant. I mean, I can't imagine what it's like, to be honest with you. I would hate that. I can't imagine what it's like to have your kids in a school and, and zoned for a school that is um, awful that has those low test scores, that has all of that crime and and that pregnancy and the bullying and the fighting and all of that stuff that goes on. This is from the Tennessean. And again, we don't know what's in it, but this is from the Tennessean. Lee and his staff have for months danced around the specific details of his education proposal. Lawmakers have yet to officially file legislation on the program. A bill that was accidentally filed and quickly withdrawn last week showed the program would neither require testing or accountability requirements for participating students, nor would it guarantee disability accommodations required of public schools. And again, that is uh, from the Tennessean. The governor has put aside $141 million, and that will give 20,000 students $7,000 for private schools in the initial rollout. One of the big criticisms of the governor's plan is the fact that the worry, there's a lot of worries. One of the worries is that because you are currently, we have all of these kids that are going to private school. And so the state is not, you know, giving funding for those kids. Well, suddenly, if you include all the private school kids in the state of Tennessee in this particular plan, well, then that's an additional many millions of dollars to send those kids to the school of their choice or allow them to continue to go to that private school. It's just the state is picking up the tab. So that's one of the other worries is that you've got all of these uh, kids that right now the state's not paying for that the state will eventually begin paying for. And I've said from the very beginning, my worry is that I'm not worrying about the defunding of the public schools. I'm not worried about any of that. But I do wonder if this is, you know, too big of a bite too soon. That That is my thing. But remember, again, last year, Governor Lee and the state legislature increased public school funding by $261 million for the upcoming fiscal year and gave teachers a raise as well. 
Now, Representative Justin Pearson, I know you folks will love this. I know that uh, this got my blood boiling when I read this at 2 o'clock in the morning. Representative Justin Pearson out of Memphis stood defiantly in the back of the chamber holding out his right arm in a thumbs down sign. But the governor, for his part, you know, as he's trying to make all of his points, uh, he's struggling because the hecklers made it almost impossible for him to speak. Listen to this moment that happened where somebody from the chamber bellows to these uh, people screeching up in the balcony. Please let the governor speak. Children are dying. Let the governor speak uninterrupted, please. And uh, for me, the governor had a great line, a comeback to all of the hecklers. Civility is a strength. It is not a weakness. And, and listen, it's true. And so it was incredibly difficult as I'm watching and, and listening to the speech yesterday or last night. When you've got all of these people that are heckling the governor. It was incredibly frustrating because I wanted to hear what the governor had to say, because he's he's got his right to give the speech to the people of Tennessee. But I also understand that it is the people's house. There is a time and a place. And and while I would submit that perhaps that is the place to protest, it wasn't the time because this was a time for the governor to speak to all of the people in Middle Tennessee and let him get his points across. And just because you may not like what the governor has to say doesn't necessarily mean that that he doesn't have the right to say it. He does have the right to say it. And again, what I'll say is, and, and by the way, as far as the you know, what, what the governor wants to do with, uh, with school choice, I'm all for school choice. I don't know if this is the right plan because I have not seen the plan. I've got some of the... Some of the concerns that I that I mentioned earlier about is this too much too soon, but I don't believe that we're defunding public schools. I I don't believe that this is something that is going to hurt the public schools. I think that this is something that the the teachers union doesn't like. And I do understand the advocates for public schooling. You know, they're having fits over this. But you know what? Look at the scores. Look at the scores at Davidson. Look at the scores in Shelby County. Look at these scores. And you have parents whose kids are trapped in these schools. And those kids, they do deserve a chance. But again, do I support this particular piece of legislation? From what I've seen of it, I've got some concerns. But overall, I actually think it's pretty good. But I'm I'm not that anybody's asking for my opinion, but it is what I do as a living. Uh, I'm going to reserve my my opinion on this until I see the actual bill.